And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now, a couple of days ago, we did a video talking about some of the biggest position battles on the Detroit Lions. As we go through OTAs, as we get into mandatory mini camp and mandatory training camp, there's going to be a lot of players fighting for a lot of different positions and fighting for a lot of playing time. And not everybody is going to win, but there is going to be a lot of big and impactful position battles as we continue through the preseason process. And that video had a lot of discussion in the comments about not only who was going to win the battles we talked about, but some of the battles that we didn't talk about, some of the position battles for playing time, and even roster positions that we didn't get a chance to talk about. And after kind of thinking about it for a little bit, there are a lot more position battles on this roster than just the ones we talked about last time. So today I wanted to give you a few more position battles, not only battles that could decide whether a player makes the roster, makes the practice squad, or becomes a free agent, but the battles that are going to determine playing time the battles that are going to the battles that are going to determine snap count and the battles that are going to impact this team in 2023 so with that being said let's get right on into taking a look at the Detroit Lions biggest positional battles as we near mandatory training camp now one of the big ones that was talked about last time in the comment section was the running back core. And I think the running back core might be one of the biggest position battles in this entire franchise right now, because there are five running backs currently on the active roster. I think not only can all five of them make the roster, I think all five of them can see upwards of 50 touches this season if they end up beating out their counterparts. Now, let's start off with Jameer Gibbs, the 12th overall pick, the running back from Alabama. Blazing speed, amazing contact balance, elite wide receiver, will probably get 150 touches this year and is guaranteed to make the roster and have a role. He's already taking first team reps with the Detroit Lions offense and has looked really fluid as a wide receiver as well as very, very strong as a running back. Now, David Montgomery is also guaranteed to make this roster, right? Three years, $18 million this offseason, a player that has had the highest forced missed tackle rate in the NFL since entering as a rookie five seasons ago and has been a phenomenal running back despite not putting up phenomenal numbers because quite frankly, the Chicago Bears rushing success wasn't all that good without Justin Fields. The raw offensive line wasn't a great run blocking unit. And really, it just wasn't an ideal situation for David Montgomery. However, he is coming to the Detroit Lions with a vastly improved situation a vastly improved offensive line, massively improved offensive scheme and play caller. And now he's in a position where not only could he be a 200 plus touchback to replace the touches that Jamal Williams left behind, but he could genuinely have 12 to 1300 yards and 12 to 15 touchdowns this year. If he can stay healthy and play like the player he has been with the Chicago bears. Not to mention David Montgomery is a good receiver, so he could see upwards of 250 touches this year, both on the ground and and through the air, and him and Jameer Gibbs are going to be a really good running back duo. However, the Lions don't just use two running backs. The Lions in years past have gone into running back three territory, and even at points in the season, delved into the running back four territory in order to get some touches and get some production. That's where the intriguing battles actually begin, right? Craig Reynolds was a UDFA standout in Dan Campbell's first year as the head coach, and once some of the running backs start sustained injury, Craig Reynolds came in and played really well. He had a 100-yard rushing day versus the Arizona Cardinals, I believe was his first 100-yard rushing day, and then had a second one later in the season as well. He showed that he could be a really good backup running back, a good change of pace running back, a player that has good contact balance, reads the field very well, and just is a good feel and a natural feel for the running back position. And unfortunately, he did get injured a season ago, which led to 
which led to Justin Jackson being kind of the primary RB3 and being really good at that role. But with Craig Reynolds returning, I do expect him to take that RB3 role, which really leaves Muhammad Ibrahim and Jamar Jefferson to running back four. Now, I think Muhammad Ibrahim is going to win this battle. They gave him an actual signing bonus out of UDFA, which means he was probably somebody that was draftable on their board. And for a player that is seemingly always good in OTAs, a player that is seemingly always good in the preseason, Jamar Jefferson never really seems to find his way on the field during the regular season. And I think one of those two players will end up on the practice squad, while one of those two players is going to end up on the active 53-man roster. Now, right now, I would give the slight edge to Muhammad Ibrahim because I think his goal line set is going to give him the edge over kind of the balanced set that Jefferson has as both Craig Reynolds and David Montgomery kind of have a more balanced skill set and nobody on the roster aside from Muhammad Ibrahim is really that goal line back that's going to get you the tough one or two yards and is going to grind out and just kind of be that reliable short yardage back like Muhammad Ibrahim can be. So I think that the running back competition is going to be incredibly tough. I think it'll be a really fun one to watch in the preseason, especially the battle between Ren Reynolds, Jefferson, and Ibrahim. If I had to guess, I would say probably Reynolds and Ibrahim are going to walk out the victors of that one. However, it's not the only battle that is going to be significant this offseason, as the edge rushers are going to compete for playing time. Now, the Detroit Lions last season carried seven edge rushers into week one, currently have eight edge rushers on the roster, and I believe these will be the seven that make the final 53. Aiden Hutchinson, James Houston are pretty obvious, right? Two guys that led you in seven a season ago, both on their rookie contracts, very, very good football players will not only make the roster, but will play significant snaps. The Okwara brothers, I think, are also locks to make this roster. Romeo Okwara took a massive pay cut, and the Lions kept him through a massive career-changing injury. I don't think that they're going to cut him now, whether he's going to start, whether he's going to play a whole lot. I'm not entirely sure. He did play quite a bit near the end of the season once he did come back from that Achilles injury. He played pretty well. I would almost guarantee Romeo makes the roster, and despite the injury concerns and despite the injury history, I think Julian does as well. He made a couple starts in the 2022 season for the Detroit Lions before getting injured and before having kind of an injury spree that ended his 2022 campaign. But when he was on the field, he was really good. Had great games versus the Chicago Bears as well as a couple other performances throughout the year and looked really good when he was on the field. Now, Josh Pascal, the second-year rookie, had another really good day the second time around versus the Chicago Bears, as well as a phenomenal debut performance versus the Dallas Cowboys. He is a lock to make the roster, as well as John Kaminsky, who had four sacks a season ago and re-signed a two-year deal with the Lions to stay in Detroit. And then Charles Harris is in a very similar situation to Romeo Okwara, where the Lions stuck with him through a pretty significant injury, and if he is going to be healthy day one, I think he's going to get a significant amount of playing time as well. I would not be surprised if each one of these edge rushers finishes with eight, four to six sacks and with Aiden Hutchinson and James Houston being upwards of 10 to 12 sacks, right? I think Aiden Hutchinson can reach double digits. I think James Houston can reach double digits. I think Romeo Quara can reach double digits. And I think Pascal Julian, Kaminsky, and Harris can all get five to six sacks by themselves as they're all going to be rotating and rushing at different times with different packages and different downs and distances. So I think that this is going to be a really intriguing thing to watch, not because I think that somebody's going to make the roster and one of these players is going to be cut, but to see who plays what role, right? Is James Houston going to take a full-time starting edge rusher position? Is Romeo Quara going to return and be kind of the more traditional edge rusher alongside Aiden Hutchinson? Is Josh Pascal going to develop and get more pass rushing reps this season than he did last season? Is John Kaminsky going to play more or is he going to play more inside like he did last year? Is Charles Harris going to continue to have a role like he did at the start of 2022 when Romeo Okwara was injured? I think that it's a very important and very interesting battle to see what players are going to play and what players are going to be more reserved or rotational players. Now, sticking on the defensive side of the ball and talking about another deep group on the defense, the linebacking core went from being one of the Lions' weaknesses a season ago to genuinely having quite a bit of solid depth, especially for a team that only puts out two linebackers at a time. Now, Malcolm Rodriguez was the surprise of the draft last year, right? He was a sixth-round rookie that started day one and came out and played like a true veteran. He was the Lions, I would argue, best linebacker a season ago, and if not, he was easily the Lions linebacker too, and for a rookie, 
in the sixth round was incredible. Derek Barnes had a couple of really good games, especially versus the Green Bay Packers. The first time around where he forced an interception as well as a huge goal line stop that ended up being crucial in the Detroit Lions defensive stance. And from everything that we've heard, he has had a phenomenal OTA practice so far and is actually the one taking first team reps alongside Alex Anzalone. Speaking of Alex Anzalone, the two time team captain after coming in in free agency through Brad Holmes's first class, he has been kind of the lifeblood of the defense over the last couple of seasons and is going to start on the linebacker core right he is the leader he is the veteran he is the defensive captain and he is going to play after signing again a three-year deal for a pretty sizable amount of money a jet campbell the linebacker from iowa was a first round pick in the best linebacker from the 2023 class he is currently taking second team reps but I have no doubt will eventually develop into a linebacker one and will probably be taking linebacker one reps by time the season comes around. Those four are going to rotate a lot. Malcolm Rodriguez, Derek Barnes, Alex Anzalone, and Jack Campbell are all going to play a ton of snaps for the Detroit Lions in 2023. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were packages now that they actually have the personnel that the Lions put in three linebackers and you have Campbell, Anzalone, and Rodriguez all on the field at the same time. Now I threw Jalen Reeves-Nabin on here too, as he was a starter for the Lions in 2021, is a pretty good coverage linebacker and a phenomenal special teams ace. And for a team that went from having really, really poor linebackers just two seasons ago, and even last year had struggles with linebacker depth, all of a sudden you go from having your 2021 starter being your linebacker five and having four legit starting linebackers in the NFL on your roster that you can rotate, keep fresh and play in a multitude of different roles. The lions all of a sudden have a really deep linebacking core. And I think the battle between these four in training camp is going to be one to watch. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how the lions use their linebackers throughout the preseason to kind of get a feel of what role each player is going to have. Now, Moving back to the offensive side of the ball and the final, final position medal of today's video, I want to talk about the quarterbacking situation. Now, obviously, Jared Goff is going to play, and ideally, he plays every snap of every game of the entire season, unless it's a huge blowout and we put in the backup quarterback to hand the ball off a few times, like we did last year with the Chicago Bears. Ideally, Jared Goff takes every snap under center for the Detroit Lions, but the backup quarterback position is going to be a fun battle to watch through the preseason. Hendon Hooker probably won't be healthy. As much as I want to see Hendon Hooker play, I want to see our third-round pick you know, throwing the football in the preseason, it's likely not going to happen. He hasn't practiced on the field yet for the Detroit Lions, and despite taking a lot of mental reps and despite being probably mentally prepared for the preseason, he's probably not going to be physically prepared, nor is he going to be throwing through the 2023 preseason. Nate Sudfeld has had a couple of really good days at OTAs, as well as having a couple of really down days at OTAs, and Adrian Martinez, the UDFA quarterback that the Lions have loved since the beginning of the pre-draft process, has been playing pretty well from what I've heard at OTAs. Him and Antoine Green have had a really good connection with the third string with the third string offense. And Adrian Martinez brings a lot to the table that Nate Sudfeld simply doesn't, right? I don't think there's a throw that Nate Sudfeld can make that Adrian Martinez is incapable of making. However, I do think the the rushing ability. I do think the athleticism and the, you know, quarterback run game that the, the Adrian Martinez can bring to the Lions is something that Nate Sudfeld simply cannot match, right? He is a phenomenal runner of the football. He is arguably the best athlete on both Kansas State and Nebraska for the four seasons that he was in college football. And Adrian Martinez is an immensely talented quarterback. He has the arm talent to make a ton of throws in the NFL, as well as having the rushing ability to not only be on the roster, but potentially get certain wildcat packages similarly to how the Baltimore Ravens use Lamar Jackson his rookie season, as well as how the Chicago Bears use Justin Fields in the very early stages of his career, right? It's not going to be, oh, Adrian Martinez is going to start. Adrian Martinez likely won't develop into a starting quarterback, but... I think the tools are there that he could. I think that the tools are there that he could even potentially have a role as a QB rusher on the Detroit Lions 2023 offense just to add another red zone or goal line wrinkle. So I think that that competition is going to be very interesting. As of right now, Sudfeld has taken all of the QB2 reps and Adrian Martinez has taken all of the QB3 reps. But if Sudfeld continues to struggle through OTAs and Martinez continues to excel, I think we could see that changing pretty quickly 
with Detroit's backup quarterback. But with all that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. Those are the biggest position battles going into the mandatory training camp. I believe Lions training camp starts in just a couple of days. And it'll be very interesting to see what players are taking reps where and how many reps each player is going to receive. But if you did enjoy the content, please make sure you get on below and subscribe to the channel. Helps the channel out a ton as well as hitting the bell notification so that you never miss a Detroit Lions upload. But with all that being said, it's like I forget today. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions.